problem peddlers. We are solution merchants. We come here to talk about what we can do for ourselves, not what is being done for us. We do know, according to the World Bank, remittances for 2003 amounted to about $200 billion. So however conservative we may be, remittances from the UK to Africa must amount to hundreds of millions of pounds annually. So we are by far the biggest donors to Africa. The reason why we are poor is partly because we are unable to utilize the resources that God has given to us. As long as we continue to allow people to come and take raw materials and process them elsewhere, it will be very difficult for Africa to benefit from her resources. I think I'm going to take and deliver to our committee that Africa is a place that we should be looking forward to, making sure that we link our skills our talents and our resources. I think I'm encouraged by what she said, knowing that our resources are really the way we look at our homeland as a future, not as a past. The African economies are going to grow through business growth. So if we want our economies to grow, then we need to grow businesses. So that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is one of the key barriers to growth now in business is lack of finance. And so venture capital and private equity finance is a, a very important source of finance to businesses that want to grow. Um, the third thing is uh, with venture capital and private equity, we do not just give um, companies money, we also support them with management and other skills. And so we're not just, you know, it's, it's a balance between capacity building and uh, financing. Africa has a whole heap of potential and art and culture has been one of its major exports. So, and I feel that the arts transcends boundaries that politics can't necessarily transcend. If you value your community, you work and, and, and cultivate the skills that are necessary to, to bring about transformation. And entrepreneurship is such a key challenge of the time. How we turn our talents into skills that can help us uh, develop as a community. So yes, I agree with the views on entrepreneurship as expressed by the professor. We see ourselves as, an, as a social enterprise. We're, in, we're a non-profit business organisation and we basically have got together as a young group of Africans and in order to put this magazine together with no, with no funding from any other organisation apart from African Outreach who gave us a loan. I think by investing in the future, the most important thing she said for me was about education. Taking it back and educating people, but there's three aspects towards education. One is the sustainability from the grassroots, the leadership and the attitude. So education is important, but we have to do it with the right mindset. Now, when you go to a university and you read and you get a degree, that has not given you the skills and the tools. You may have the knowledge, but you still need skill and tools. But even if you send money back home, and I want to commend you very highly for the large amount of money you send back home, even though you do that, if your people do not have skills, they cannot take advantage of the opportunity that I have. The onus is on us leaders, on us 
the African leadership to demonstrate that we have no business being given orders by other sovereign states because we can govern ourselves properly. productive, um, lots of good networking amongst ourselves um, and what we like about the organization it follows up, it's not just a talking shop so when you do things it actually they're going to do something about it, you can contact them and so forth so in that sense absolutely brilliant, wonderful day. But what is best is to be an enlightened African so take the best from the West and go back to Africa and build it up. What we're doing is saying stop the looting we are poor because they've been looting us just imagine g8 okay 110 years ago the same people their ancestors met in berlin for carving up the african continent now, if we'd been organized then do you think we'd go there and say carve it up nicely be nice to us or would we say no you have no rights to do that and that's what we should be doing. Coming today gives me the pride and you know, makes you feel in love with your people and then yourself. And, and that, as and being a leader in your own organisations, that's what you can take back to organisations. Many Africans have gone to conferences and things. Even when they are talking about Africa, there are only a few African faces there. But this is being organised by Africans in diaspora to help projects back at home. And that just falls right in line with what I've always thought about, you know, and talked about and worked for. I, I really could not have been a, a happier person, you know, today. Thanks for letting me come to this one. 